Welcome to Behind the Pages. Sergio Troncoso is with us today. Sergio is the author of numerous works of fiction. He is the son of immigrant Mexican parents. He has taught writing at Yale University Writers Workshop. And he's here today to talk about our peculiar kind of immigrant son. This is a collection of short stories that are linked to each other basically by the theme of trying to uh, decide who you are in the world and what place you have when you are the first generation son of immigrant parents. Welcome. Thank you for inviting me to your program. We're very happy to have you here. Um, your book is, uh, as I said, it's a series of stories that are sort of linked to each other. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the book? Sure. It's a collection of 13 linked stories, mm -hmm. and the stories are broadly focused on immigration, first-generation immigrants, mm -hmm. um, mostly Mexican-American immigrants, mm -hmm. uh, beyond the border as mm -hmm. they go into places like Connecticut or Boston or mm -hmm. New York uh, to try to find their place in the world. Mm -hmm. And some of them have successes and failures. Mm -hmm. um, and the stories are also grouped in twos and threes. So within these groups of twos or threes, characters appear and reappear mm -hmm. from a different angle. Yes. And uh, one of my graduate degrees at Yale is in philosophy, and I'm heavily into Nietzsche. Mm -hmm. And so I was playing with perspectivism and, and mm -hmm. time. And Virginia Woolf also is one of my favorite writers. So mm -hmm. I, I loved uh, how she plays with time in many of her works. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, this, the first story is about a man attending his father's wake. It's clear from his interior monologue that he had a very complicated relationship with his parents. Uh, can you tell us about that? Sure. It's David Calderon. He's mm -hmm. the character in the first story, which mm -hmm. is called Rosary on the Border. Mm -hmm. And he's 50, and he left El Paso um, for, coming from a very poor background mm -hmm. and took sort of leaps and bounds um, to study in Boston. Mm -hmm. And it's trying to find his place. So he goes back to El Paso because his father has died. Mm -hmm. And this, this funeral prompts all these questions as to what happened when he left home. Mm -hmm. Did he create a new home in Connecticut and, and Boston when mm -hmm. he left? And so the relationship was in part that th his parents didn't understand who he was or who he became mm -hmm. on the one hand but on the other hand David really learned how to survive how to work until you drop mm -hmm. how you know that Mexican immigrant work ethic mm -hmm. that that really was very valuable to him to succeed but that same ethic that same value from the border mm -hmm. uh, also propelled him way beyond the border so that in a sense he became alone Mm -hmm. He became uh, his own person, but it also separated him from his father and from his mother. Hmm. How, how did uh, his relationship with his father, the characters, um, how, how is that similar to your relationship with your father? Is there any similarity? Yeah, the, 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 there is. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that first story and the first few stories are realistic stories. Mm -hmm. And as you it can tell in the book, A Peculiar Kind of Immigrant Son, the stories start going into a dystopian element toward the end, but the mm -hmm. first ones are very realistic. Mm -hmm. And it's similar to, to it's not... Uh, autobiographical yeah. because that that series of events didn't happen to me but mm -hmm. the emotions I think are true mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and I had a you know similar relationship with my father he was a construction uh, engineer draftsman who came from Mexico and he uh, they were born in Chihuahua both my parents mm -hmm. uh, my father was from Juarez and my mother was from sort of the interior of Chihuahua mm -hmm. and they came over in the 1950s and, and we grew up very poor. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, the first thing I tell my, my Yale students is that I grew up without electricity mm -hmm. and an outhouse in the backyard. Mm -hmm. And then from that beginning, I ended up going to Harvard mm -hmm. and then went to Yale as a graduate student. And, and I did not know what I was doing. I did not know what the Ivy League was. Um, mm -hmm. I had no clue. In fact, when I was driving into, um, into um, Harvard Square from Logan, mm -hmm. I thought the, the, the taxi driver was 
perhaps kidnapping me <laughs> and, and bringing me to a park. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, this, this is the school. Harvard, <laughs> this is Harvard Square. <laughs> this is uh, the park. I just imagined a desert yeah. school like uh, in El Paso. Mm -hmm. And so that, that leap away from home mm -hmm. is similar to what David experienced. Mm -hmm. And so he's, he's trying to understand and keep a relationship to his parents who only visit him once mm -hmm. when he graduates. And it's because David's parents in this first story, they don't have the money to visit him. Mm -hmm. And when they arrive, they, they are very self-conscious about their accents. Mm -hmm. They're darker than, than David's friends. And all of these are similar things that occurred to me mm -hmm. when I was uh, at Harvard. Uh, but, but also, like David, in, in a way, uh, one of the best things that happened to me is I found a, a wonderful girlfriend at mm -hmm. Harvard that later became my wife, and, and all of those things started becoming uh, better. Simply mm -hmm. the, uh, the assimilation into the school, mm -hmm. the understanding what you're supposed to do, mm -hmm. but that relationship that I wanted to keep, I think mirrors what is going on in David's head, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is you've left the border, yeah. these values from the border really helped you to survive and, and persevere yeah. in an environment that was like going to Mars for me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yet, because of these values you've, and because of your success at places like Harvard and Yale, mm -hmm. it has really separated you in a fundamental way mm -hmm. from, from your home, from your parents. And they understand you, but they really don't understand you. Mm -hmm. They don't understand what Harvard is or the kind of academic pressures you face. They've never really gone much into the interior of this country mm -hmm. in any way. And, and you know, my parents, as w uh, like, like the David's parents, know English, but they're more comfortable in Spanish. In fact, they're embarrassed by their English. Mm -hmm. So they, they will speak Spanish to, to David mm -hmm. often. Um, so a lot of the a, a lot of the similar emotions that I went through with mm -hmm. my father, um, you know, is similar to that character. I wouldn't say it's completely autobiographical, but yeah. but it's similar. And and I, I guess the last thing I'll say about this is the biggest clashes I had with my father were about machismo. Mm -hmm. You know, I I you know I I would consider myself I I am a feminist. Mm -hmm. um, that's how uh, what I believe deeply. Mm -hmm. And I did not like that that value mm -hmm. that my father had, mm -hmm. and perhaps it it was a, a something from his times from the 1950s. But he did have other values. He taught us to work very hard. He mm -hmm. he was there and he loved my mother for for uh, 50 some years. Mm -hmm. um, so he was a good father. But there were some things that 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 he practiced that I did not agree with, mm -hmm. and so that's where the clashes came through. Yeah. Yeah, in, in this story, the the main character recalls is looking back and recalls that that time when his parents did come to Boston to his um, graduation, he had a big fight with them at the train station, um, and accused them of never having loved him. If we could step into that scene at that moment and ask him, what do you want to hear from your parents? What would he tell us? I would say David is confused. He's mm -hmm. not sure what he wants to hear from mm -hmm. them because he's not sure what connection he still has with them. He mm -hmm. wants a connection, yet he also does not know how they can connect to what he's done at that moment, which mm -hmm. is graduate from a, a place like Harvard. Yeah. And and so he he's he's trying to he's I, I would say flailing mm -hmm. in a way trying to understand how he c can keep that connection mm -hmm. to his parents, although he has separated himself in a fundamental way, simply by educating himself. Yeah. And, and I think the, uh, the other thing going on in David's head is he's realizing that it wasn't Harvard that did this. Mm -hmm. He was already like that. Mm -hmm. Before he left Isleta, mm -hmm. which is Isleta is a little hamlet on the border, on the outskirts of El Paso, where I grew up and where David grew up, mm -hmm. um, he, David was already an outsider. Mm -hmm. He was born Mexican. He was born within a stone's throw uh, from the Mexican border. Mm -hmm. And while he was there, he was already aching to get out. He was already uh, 
accelerated, I guess, in his mind mm -hmm. in a way that separated him almost naturally from the people around him. Mm -hmm. And so his father at a moment in that scene at, at, at South Station says, you weren't like any of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and so it's not, you know, it's a mistake to say for that character that Harvard did this to him or the mm -hmm. Northeast did this to him. He was already like that. He yeah. was already a little separate. He was already uh, aching for more and mm -hmm. pushing himself right. in a way that other people weren't. Mm -hmm. and, and that in itself separated him and, and the way it became manifest mm -hmm. was by going to Harvard but but it could have been in all sorts of ways. Yeah, I, I, def I really got the impression that although his parents said you're not one of us that he could never get away from being one of them that his his life struggle was just to that he couldn't deny that where he came from. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No, and, and I'm very proud to be, mm -hmm. you know, the, the son of Mexican immigrants. I mm -hmm. say, I've been s saying that. That's on my website for the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. and, and I, you know, I believe certainly, like David does, a character, mm -hmm. that how I grew up is really the fundamental way, the, the, the new way mm -hmm. of the pilgrims. You know, I mm -hmm. think the pilgrims, when they came here in the 1600s, and began with nothing on Plymouth Rock, mm -hmm. not far from here, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. um, they, they were looking for sanctuary. They were looking for hard work. And, and mm -hmm. they went through a lot of sacrifice and to survive this brutal world. Mm -hmm. And I think the new immigrants coming from the South this mm -hmm. time, from Latin America, from Mexico, from Guatemala, from mm -hmm. Central America, they embody that spirit. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I think this country... Uh, some people in this country, anyway, mm. are very anti-immigrant now, and they r they don't recognize that they actually are replaying and renewing mm -hmm. the values that we have in this country mm -hmm. uh, from from the pilgrims. Yes. Uh, and so mm -hmm. I, I believe, certainly like David does, that that's what Mexican and other immigrants who are doing it right mm -hmm. uh, embody. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's. I, I think. Yeah. It's certainly, the reality of. Uh, people who immigrate here is exactly that, that they come to work and to build a life, not to yep. take, you know, which I think is sort of... A, and and, and you know, like yeah. my parents, they're gun-ho American. Mm -hmm. They want to yeah. be, you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're thrilled to be in this country, mm -hmm. and they're proud to be in this country because they know what it means to be in this country. It yeah. wasn't given to them. They actually chose it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In that story, um, just one last question about that specific story, in that particular scene at the train station, if we could have then asked his parents, what do you want to say to your son? What would they tell us? What would the parents say to their son? No, what would they tell us they wanted to say to their son? Well, I, you know, that's, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get into their heads. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, if they could, they, they, would, they would probably reaffirm that they love David, mm -hmm. that they... Uh, believe in him, mm -hmm. that sometimes you can believe in somebody without knowing exactly what they're doing, mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. understanding everything about them. Mm -hmm. And you believe in them simply because of who they are yeah. and, and their position in your, mm -hmm. in your life, uh, that they're your son, that mm -hmm. they're your daughter, that they believe in you even though they don't understand you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, and, that, and I think that's choices. one thing. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what they would say to him. Mm -hmm. Would they be able to tell him that they were proud of what he had accomplished? Yeah. Because in his head, he thinks, at least the main character tells us, that his father disapproves of every, every choice he's made, including mm -hmm. you know, leaving the community, going to Boston. Well, th that's an interesting point you bring up because mm -hmm. it's all about what kind of pride do you have in your child? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like my parents' version of pride was not to um, clap me on the back mm -hmm. on anything I did. Right. They would they would praise me if I actually did something good mm -hmm. that th that um, from their high standards mm -hmm. was good. And I think nowadays parents are way too easy on their on their mm -hmm, kids. Mm -hmm. You know, it was this tough love, yeah. which is okay. Yes, mm -hmm. you did something good, and that's terrific. Um, what's next? Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And as my mother, even now, my mother is still alive. I go back to Isleta, mm -hmm. and she says in Spanish, "No te creas muy muy." Mm -hmm. 
just because you went to Harvard and Yale, which means don't think of yourself as too much, too much with <laughs> your you know, chin and, and nose in the air uh -huh. just because you went to these big schools. Uh -huh. They hold me accountable. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and it is a different kind of pride in you. I know they're proud of me, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they also hold, hold me accountable. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. say, you know, always have integrity, always act the right way, mm -hmm. even if you don't have to, even if nobody's watching. That's how you should act. Mm -hmm. And th those high standards are very different from, you know, I, I, I do something simple and, and good and they're like uh, as if I've won the Nobel Prize. Right. My parents would never be like that. Mm -hmm. So it's a different mm -hmm. kind of pride, so yeah. to speak. And, and I think in that scene with, with the father and David, you know, the father is, is, um, is pressing him, mm -hmm. is challenging mm -hmm. him, mm -hmm. is saying, you've graduated from this school now what yeah you know now mm -hmm. it's up to you to get a job and do something stop dreaming mm -hmm. he's mm -hmm. he's testing him yes. in a way mm -hmm. the second story in your book is uh, about uh, a man who is living in connecticut it's He's David Calderon again. It's him again. Okay. Right. The first one, I don't think we ever learned his name. You know, so um, yeah. Uh, in second story, we do know his name. Um, and 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 in this book, he's at his home in Connecticut um, by himself. And you will tell us about the second story. Actually, well, it's yeah. it's yeah. called New Englander, mm -hmm. and it's a story that begins. And David, now you see him in his retirement. Mm -hmm. maybe a few years later, mm -hmm. and he's uh, retired to Connecticut after being a professor in, in New York, and he has a nice, beautiful house, and he has a, a wife that he met in school, and then he has a couple of kids, and as he's chopping wood, uh, he sees somebody coming up his very long driveway, because he mm -hmm. lives in the woods, basically. And so he goes to put away his, 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 his axe and other things that he has, and this person is, comes to rob him. This is a person who is an Anglo, as you would say, in, in El Paso, which is, just means somebody who's not in Mexico. <laughs> um, and he's escaping. The, the idea you get from the story is that this person is escaping because there's uh, basically sirens in the background mm -hmm. and there's a helicopter that goes overhead. So this person has probably escaped from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is the first house he finds, a mm -hmm. house in the woods. And he holds a gun up to David. And so, and, and I won't divulge no. everything that happens in the right. story, but it, uh, my sense of this story was really to turn the tables mm -hmm. in a way, to ask, who is the real New Englander, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The one who looks, who's blonde and blue-eyed and is holding a gun and is basically mm -hmm. assuming privilege, or the one who worked hard for everything he got, mm -hmm. who's done it the right way, and is fighting to keep what he earned, mm -hmm. which is David the Mexican mm -hmm. in Connecticut. And so the, in my mind, it's these tables being turned. Mm -hmm so mm -hmm. to speak, who you have the, the, the quote-unquote white guy who is with the gun, um, assuming his sense of privilege, and at a certain point he even calls David a spick. Mm -hmm. He thinks he's Puerto Rican or, or thinks he's Dominican, mm -hmm. but David is Mexican. But mm -hmm. he, he understands this guy is a, 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 a lot, an educated Latino mm -hmm. who has made it in Connecticut, and I'm going to take what he has. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's this sense of... Um, the table being turned mm -hmm. on 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 the values on uh, the person uh, who David has become, mm -hmm. and and he has to at a certain point fight back. Mm -hmm. So it's also an internal issue because David, because he studied so much, mm -hmm. he's become soft and kind of a little chubby, and mm -hmm. he has become an intellectual. He 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 has to go back in a way to what he remembered on the street, mm -hmm. any sleta, and how to fight to mm -hmm. simply survive a physical al altercation. And so this is how the story plays out, mm -hmm. that he has to remember that side, the yes. old Isleta, the David of the border, to, to survive this horrible situation he mm -hmm. finds himself in, in his house. Well, um, yes, because that's what we see him, like in, in the, what we watch as we're reading the story is uh, how he reacts to the situation as it unfolds. So he begins by being sort of placating, 
you know, trying to like, just take something and go, it's okay, it's okay, you know. And then as the story unfolds, there's a certain point at which he, you know, he had goes through a metamorphosis into a different person. So looking at that character, doing that, what would you say, what phase of that would represent who he is as a husband and father? Well, in my mind, I'm mm -hmm. glad you brought that up because mm -hmm. that whole point of the, the entire collection of stories yeah. is really to look at the different selves we are, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the perspectivism. Yeah. Um, you know, David is the guy who grew up poor on the border. Mm -hmm. David is the professor uh, from uh, New York who now has a nice, beautiful house in Connecticut. David is also that suburban father mm -hmm. who has two boys and, you know, has morphed into being a little bit more accepting of his, for example, boys bringing their girlfriends to their house, mm -hmm. something his parents would never have allowed. Mm -hmm. And so you have, all of us are these different selves. Mm -hmm. And the question is what self comes up at the moment that he needs it. And at the beginning, as you said, he's, he's using his cerebral self, mm -hmm. his Harvard self, his, you know, I don't have anything against you, take whatever you want. Mm -hmm. he's, he's trying to reason with the guy. Yeah. And he finds out this is not going to work. In mm -hmm. fact, he's probably going to end up dead mm -hmm. if he keeps reasoning. So reason at a certain point reaches its limits. Mm -hmm. And so he has to fight. Mm -hmm. He has to f physically take the gun away and fight this man without getting himself killed mm -hmm. and, and, then, and then somehow come back to the house mm -hmm. after, after the, the brutal tussle that mm -hmm. they go through. So, so I, th I think that's what I was trying to do as a yeah. writer, to mm -hmm. discover these different selves, because I think they're always in you. Yes, I, I agree. I don't think you, yeah. you lose them. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And sometimes you, in a certain charged moment, yes. that other self that you've hidden mm -hmm. will come out. Yes, if challenged enough. If yeah. challenged enough, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and, and, and in the third story, we find a main character, Carlos, who is dealing with his relationship with his wife, Sarah, as they deal with the death of Sarah's dad. Um, so in this story, uh, well, first of all, what scenes from this were drawn from, from your life? Is, is this something well, that happened? or um, Most of that was mm -hmm. created. Okay. From yeah. from from scratch. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, what what is drawn from my life is that I was a wannabe historian. Mm -hmm. I when I was at Harvard, I one of my favorite um, subjects and the, my mentor really was John Womack, mm -hmm. who's a great chairman and um, history professor whose specialty was Mexico. Mm -hmm. So I took every course that Womack offered, and I was being trained to be a historian. So mm -hmm. a lot of my uh, ideas about how Carlos, a historian in that story, I mm -hmm. think it's called The Living Museum of Love, mm -hmm. is, 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 is functioning is it, that sort of intellectualism mm -hmm. on Mexican history. He loves Mexican history. He loves imparting mm -hmm. that, that history to his students. But it's also a story about why does history matter now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and does, should it matter now? And in, in their case, between Carlos and Sarah, mm -hmm. it's about their relationship. They used to be passionately mm -hmm. in love. Mm -hmm. They're now middle-aged, and that love is sort of waning. Mm -hmm. So they're mm -hmm. together, but they're not quite together anymore. Right. And so, so they're yeah. both trying to recapture that. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's almost like a living museum, so mm -hmm. to speak. So. It's, it's trying to recapture that moment, that spark, mm -hmm. that love yes. that they had. And, and it's also being played out through, mm -hmm. through David's sense of history and what, well, how history well that's, matters. Yeah, that was sort of the impression I had. We're looking at the big picture of history, literal history that you study, and then the history of their relationship. And the importance of studying those two things are to be able to, be, to improve the present. Um, which they right. are looking to do in their relationship. Right, and, and that mm -hmm. is the reason you study history. Mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. not simply to learn facts, right. but because um, somebody like Nietzsche would say, mm -hmm. um, there's an eternal return. History mm -hmm. repeats itself in, mm -hmm. a, in a, maybe it's not exactly the same way, right. but in a, in a similar mm -hmm. melody. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and so for us to understand what happens in a moment when the country is in such and such a place, mm -hmm. or the economy is in such and such a place, right. th these you can get a sense of by studying history, yes. what will play out politically, what will play out economically, mm -hmm. 
Uh, and the same thing with, with, with people, in yes. a way. So I always find it frustrating. It's like, don't you remember? It wasn't that long ago that, you know, <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, but, you know, we watch people making the same mistakes either in a global sense or even a personal sense. Right. You know? Or even, you, you know, and yeah. even in your own children. Mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you, you try to tell them, you know, you know this is not going to play out right. Because I've yeah. been through that. Right. I've already done that in my, yeah. it's my history. Right. But, but they don't necessarily want to listen to you. Yeah. And so that it's that tug of war of, History does matter, and it actually mm -hmm. matters because it helps you today. Yes, if exactly. If you understand it. Yes, it does. Uh, one thing I found interested, interesting in this story is the names of the characters. Um, he's the only one with a Spanish-sounding name. It, how, in naming the characters, was that your intention to sort of illustrate how, how he feels a bit abandoned? Oh, it, which one in Car Okay, the Carlos, his wife is Sarah. Um, his son is Ethan and Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the, he, they, ch they chose names that are very Americanized. Yeah. And so he does mm -hmm. feel a bit left in the lurch. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's correct. Mm -hmm. and, and I do think very hard about the, the, the names that I choose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... And, you know, he's also cross borders. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things to understand about Carlos is that if he were in El Paso, mm -hmm. um, he wouldn't necessarily be um, a historian. Mm -hmm. he, he would, you know, he might have made, may have been an engineer or something like that. Mm -hmm. So he, even being a historian about Mexico, mm -hmm. it's almost a contradiction. Yeah. On the one hand, he's studying his history. Yes. But on the other hand, he's an intellectual, right. and so that has also okay. separated him from, mm -hmm. from. So, they could have named, you know, used Luis or, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, Jesus or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But they didn't. Right. And so, yeah. so it is. It I is thought sort it was just a very clever way to, without like, you know. Um, telling your readers to just kind of show, you know, like, okay, this, this man still doesn't see himself. There's something separate about him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, yeah. I, and I think that's true. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a very astute observation mm -hmm. on your point that, you know, he is separated from where he began. Yeah. And some of it was his own doing. Mm -hmm. Some of it was he he decided to study this in a way that was pell mell you know to the mm -hmm. to the core yes but that in itself separated mm -hmm. him from from his beginning mm -hmm. yeah so. it did um it, it, it just to sort of in the minute or so that we have left um how how did your roots as a mexican-american affect you when you were still in grade school were you proud of your roots were you um, feeling like you needed to hide them oh, absolutely mm -hmm. i mean okay. I, i'm still proud of my roots but mm -hmm. absolutely when well I was as in adults grade we school. often are sometimes as children it's different so i'm just yeah i, I mean i would say very mm -hmm. congratulations to your parents if they made you feel proud of who you were well they did mm -hmm. they did and and i had i had parents and also teachers who mm -hmm. taught me to be proud mm -hmm. of being Mexican and, and mm -hmm. a Mexican immigrant. Yeah. Um, in fourth grade, uh, Mrs. Vega was my favorite teacher. She uh -huh. recently passed away, but she actually came to my Harvard graduation. Oh, my wow. only grade school teacher that came. Yeah. We used to dance Mexican uh -huh. cumbias uh -huh. on Friday in her class. Um, because she wanted to teach uh, all the kids how to dance uh, mm -hmm. Mexican music. Wonderful. <laughs> so. Well, I'm very much enjoyed having you here, but unfortunately we are out of time. To our, our listeners, you have been watching Behind the Pages from the staff of 22 City View. I'm Diane Goshgarian. And thanks again so much for being here. You can Thank keep you.